Hello everyone, it's Bobby from Decoding here and in this video I'm going to show you an app that I've built that uses YouTube's API in a Django project. So if this is your first time visiting my channel then welcome, just don't forget to subscribe and like the videos as it's a huge help. So I've been a developer for quite some time now but I've never had the need to use YouTube's API. Um, so I work with a lot of different APIs but YouTube is just one that I've never had to dig into. So over the last few weeks, I've lifted the hood and I've really worked out what's what and how you can implement that into a Django project. So that's what I've built. So if we look at the screen now, you can see here that uh, this is the app. It opens up on a, almost a gallery of videos and it's got just two URLs. It's got a home page and it's got a play video, uh, a play video demo page. So these are all of the videos that I've uploaded onto my channel. I use an API to get the playlists, to get the videos, and then from those I then get the title, the description, and you can get duration. There's a, there's a whole bunch of metadata that you can get from the API, but I'm using just a handful of it. Uh, if you click on any one of the videos, it will then redirect you to play video, and it will add a um, parameter into the URL here. It, takes the, it gets the ID, the title, and the description, and it adds an iframe here that allows you just to click and play the video in your app. Okay, so it's not doing anything fancy, right? All it's doing is, is using an API to get information from YouTube so you can present it in your Django project. But the reason I've built the app is that you can really dig into the code and use this project to um, add some flavor to the app that you're working on. So it is on GitHub, the link to which is in the description below. This is the repository and it's got a readme file. All you need to do to get this up and running is set up a virtual environment, uh, create a directory, clone a repository, and then all you'll need is the Google API key and your YouTube channel ID. That's all you'll need. You just need to make sure that your Google API key or the project for the Google API key is configured with the right credentials. So you will need to enable all of the YouTube APIs uh, into your project to get this up and running, okay? But once you've done that, get the API key, get it into the project, project in settings.py file, and it's good to go. It does say here that you wanna make migrations and migrate, but to be fair, you don't really need to do that. You just need to fire up the server, go to localhost on your browser, and you're good to go, all right? One library that we needed to make this project work is the Google API Python client. Um, so this, again, the link to this is in the description, um, but this is the pip install Google API client, uh, Python client page, and on here you've got all sorts of links. You've got links to the docs here, which have opened on another screen, and that walks you through how to install the library and how to work with it. Okay, so that is one of the requirements of the project, but other than that, I've got all of the links to all of the Google and YouTube pages that um, give, you the, uh, give you everything that you could possibly need to get this to work. But hopefully I've built the app in a way that allows you just to sort of use the code and recycle it and use it in your own app. Okay, so let's look into Sublime Tech, shall we? So this is the project. So I've, I've already cloned the repository. I've got it on my local machine. I've already fired up the uh, virtual environment. So this is my CMD. So it's already um, going in the background. But this here is the project. Okay, so it's did Django YouTube API. In the settings file, we haven't done too much other than what's come out of the box. So in the installed apps, we've got the main app in the installed apps. We haven't done anything else with the databases. We've configured static files, so we've got static DIRS, static URL, which is there anyway, and then we've got static root because we're using static files for the logo. And uh, yeah, I think it's just the logo actually and the CSS file probably. Yeah, so CSS and JavaScript. So that's all in the static files. And then you can see here that we've got some credentials. So I've got my Google API key here. Um, API service name is YouTube and the version is V3. Channel ID, that is the did coding channel ID that we use in for this project. But you would replace this with your own key and your own channel ID for, to make it work. So if we go into the main project, um, the views, not anything fancy, not much to look at really. We are importing YouTube, which is a class in the mixins file, which is doing much of the heavy lifting of this project. So we'll go into that in, a, in more detail in a second. And we've got one view, this is basically the home view. So this is called videos. It calls YouTube dot, and there's a method in there called get data. 
and it adds that videos to the context and it just renders it to the videos HTML file. So nice and easy. And the next one, it's uh, play video. So this is the one that has the parameter and the URL. So what it does, it gets that parameter, whatever we, pa what we pass to the um, URL in the parameter, we call it vid ID. So it gets that parameter. It then calls YouTube class again and it adds the vid ID as one of the keyword arguments. And then it is a method called get video. Okay, so we'll look at the YouTube class in a moment or two, because it's quite important, as you can imagine. We pass that vid data into the context and we render it to play video. So that's all we're doing. We're not doing anything other than that. We've got two views, right? So, and I won't uh, waste any time going through, we, we're not even building any models. So one thing you could do is you could use this API, retrieve the data from YouTube and save it into an object, into a database, but we're not doing that in this project. So we're not even doing that. So mix it. It's actually got a class in there that we don't necessarily need. It's called directions. That's a hangover from a previous project. So I, I do tend to recycle this code, save me having to write it from scratch each time. So we won't look at the directions, but you can see right at the top here, we're importing request, JSON, OS. We're importing Google API client, dot discovery, and then dot errors as well. So we need that those libraries in this file for us to process the, um, the API. And this is the class. So we've got an init, um, function here. Uh, one of the things, so it brings in args and keyword arguments, and one of them is vidID. So we only use this when we're calling the method get video at the bottom here. Um, so when we're getting data, we're not actually using that at all, so that'd be none. Um, we're then pulling in the API service name, the version, the developer key, and the channel ID from settings.py. Um, so that's where we're handling those parameters, those, those variables. And then we are using the build method in the Google API client. So if we just go back into, there we go, Google API um, Python client, and this is the docs page. I think if we scroll, so we've got setting up, we've got the authentication and authorization, simple API access, authorized API access, we're not using that in this um, uh, application. Then we've got building and calling a service. Okay, so there is a method in there called build. So um, here it is, if we click on that there, this is the, uh, the build function. So this is what we're using to talk to the, or, or to communicate with the API. Um, but you can read those docs, spend a bit of time reading them so you can understand what we're actually doing here. But we're, we're instantiating a, um, a variable called YouTube and we're doing that by calling Google API client dot discovery dot build. And then we're passing in as keyword arguments, we're passing in the service name, which is YouTube, the version, which is V3, and the developer key, which is the API key that we've got saved in settings. And then we call self dot YouTube in these two methods here. So we've got get data and get video. So in get data, this is where we pull, we, this is where we get all of the videos so we can display them in the home page. So the first thing we do, and I don't want this video to be too long because uh, you, can, you can clone this repository and actually spend your time really dissecting this. We do a few requests and we get responses from these requests. And the first one is to, we do it to their playlists function here. So it's playlist requests equals self.youtube, which is this function, sorry, this variable here, dot playlists dot list. Okay, and if I open up, I've got this open up on a page here, I believe. Um, yeah, this is it here. So it's developers.google.com slash YouTube v3 docs videos list. So this has got a list of all of the APIs and it's also that it then breaks this down into um, the different parameters that you can, that you have available in the API. So we've got ID here. You've got max height, max results. So we won't go through all of them, but these the links to the docs are in the description, spend some time going through them. So that's the first request. So we're looking at playlists. We execute that request and then as, and we get that as a variable called response, playlist response. We make a list, so we use um, list comprehension to create a list of all of the playlist IDs that are currently associated to the YouTube channel. And then we have, we create a next page token equals none here. This allows us to do a while loop on um, the next piece of code. 
Um, and so because you can only do it, have a, a maximum of 50 results in each API call. So if you've got more than 50 videos against a playlist, then you would have two calls. So you want to be able to sort of keep looping through until you reach the end of the videos. So that's what we're trying to do there. And we use next page token here, and we do a little check to make sure there are no pages left at the bottom to break the loop. Okay, so that's all we're doing there. So the next request is so for each playlist in playlists, we do another request to YouTube playlist items dot lists, and we get content content details. Playlist ID is from the for loop here. The maximum results is 50. So if you've got 150 videos in a playlist, you do three loops. And page token is next page token. We're pulling it in there. So if it's none, it's basically page one. So the next time it goes in page two, it'd be number two there. And that's, this is our response that we get. And what we do is for each item in that response, we then find the video ID so if you see playlist response, we look at the items and then we append to videos, which is an empty list currently, we append the video IDs. So whilst we're looping through all of these, all we're doing is we chuck in the video IDs in this list up here. And then lastly, what we do is we make another and final request to youtube.videos.list. And this is where we get all of the uh, kind of metadata, if you like, about the video itself. So we get the response, we execute uh, video request and execute to get the response, should I say. And we do a for loop on the items in the response and we create a dictionary called vid data and we add into that the ID, the title. We then format the title so it looks good in the app by using this uh, function here called title fo formatting, which is just up the top here. So it takes the title, checks the length of uh, the number of characters in that title and if it's above or equals 30 characters, then it um, basically gets the first uh, 27 characters and then puts dot, dot, dot. Some of these titles are quite long. And do, 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 do. Yeah, and then we have the description, we have the thumbnail. So when you get the response back from YouTube, you can get there's a high res or maximum res, you've got medium, you've got low. There's a few different thumbnails that you can get. Um, we're just getting the medium URL on there and then we've got it comes with an iframe So it has the actual HTML code that comes back through and adjacent that you can add so, so it's embedded HTML is called and you can add that to your page as an iframe, which is very very handy and Then for some reason I've got title again there. We don't need that So I'll delete that and then we append this dictionary to data and this is data here we check for a next page token and we break it if there isn't, if we break the loop if there isn't any. Uh, if not, we, we do the loop again with the next page number. So that's what we're doing for get data. That's how we get all of the videos in the gallery on the front home page. The next method is a get video. So all we're doing in this instance is we're, get, we're using self uh, YouTube and we're using the videos.list, okay? So we're getting content details, snippet and player. So all we're doing is we're rep replicating this part. Yeah, we're replicating that part from the first get data method. But on this one, we don't need the uh, thumbnail and we don't need the formatted title. So we just have ID, title, description and iframe. Okay, and we pass all of the, this is what we're calling in the view. So YouTube get data, that's what we're calling. And this one is YouTube, we pass in the video ID and we get the video, pass that through in the context. And that's, that's what we get in the template file. So we will look at play video quickly. So video data, this is the ID, the title, and the description from the dictionary. And then we have the viddata.iframe, and then we use this safe filter so that we can actually have that HTML as HTML in our document. And that's how we've made that work. So that's the app. Um, let me know what you think to it in the comments. If there's anything that you want adding to it, let me know. And if I can, I will add it to the project itself. But that's it, that's the video. So thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and like, and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.